Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a SharePoint list where you can upload an image and it will analyze the image and give you some AI information. It'll, it'll auto tag the image with various things in the image. It'll read any text in the image. It'll detect objects in it. It'll detect a category and they'll give it an automatic name. And I'm doing this with the use of uh, Microsoft Power Automate Flow and uh, Azure Cognitive Services, the computer vision um, service specifically. So as a prerequisite, you'll have to set up Cognitive Services in Azure. So I'm just gonna demonstrate it right now and then I'll show you how to make it. So we're just going to click new here. This is a SharePoint list. We're just gonna add a new item. I'm just gonna give it a random name and upload an image. Let's do this turntable. I'm gonna hit save. And one of the problems that we're going to address in this video is how to access this image that you upload in Flow. There's no, right now, as of this recording, there's no like, there's no user-friendly out-of-the-box way to access the image column, but we've got a workaround. We'll just give it a few moments here and it should populate these um, columns. Okay, and it has come through. And the categories column leaves a bit to be desired. It's not the best. Up here, you see we've got an ostrich and it tags it as an animal dog. These eggs are tagged as abstract others. This um, religious icon is tagged as abstract texture. <laughs> tagged this turntable as outdoors. Although that kind of makes sense because of the wood. But the um, the tags come through a lot better. So we've got table, wooden, vinyl record, floor record, player, data storage device, indoor, circle, CD, electronics. So the tags come through very, very good. Same here with the eggs. Hay, outdoor object, egg, pile, animal, outdoor, bird, eye, ostrich. So that's all really good. Okay, so now we will just um, build this from scratch. All right, in SharePoint, I'm going to click create a site, do a team site. I'm going to call this, I've already got one called image analysis, so I'll just call this photo analysis demo. And let's make it public. Okay, I'm going to hit next. I'm going to hit finish. Now I'm going to add a list. Call it photo album. All right, now I'm going to add some columns. I'm going to add an image column. Okay, so I'm making a column here called tags. It's just going to be a single line of text. I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call this one. OCR text. This is going to be multiple lines. And I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call this one our objects. We can also do a date. I'm going to leave out that categories column just because it's kind of not good enough, really. We can use the, the tags and the objects. And I'll do another one. All right, so we've got this set up now. Let's go and build our flow. Let's um, create a flow. I'm just gonna pick one of these at random just to hop over to flow. And once here, I'm actually just gonna click, I'm just gonna click create over here on the left. And I'm going to do an automated flow. I'm gonna call it photo analysis demo. And we're going to do it when an item is created in SharePoint. And it's right there at the top of the list. And now we need to look for our new site. Now it's probably not going to be in the list just yet. It isn't. That's all right. All we need to do is go over here and we just copy our URL, the basic part right here, just the part after sites we need to include. We'll go in here, enter custom value, paste that, and there. Now we've got it. And we click the drop down here and look, we've got our list name. 
So it just, it's not in the hopper yet, but it's, it's still there and it can be found. So we've got that when the item is created. So now the first thing we want to do is we'll just kind of demonstrate a reason what uh, we'll demonstrate the main problem that this video is going to be helping you work around, which is how to access that image file. Because if we go here and we get a list of dynamic content here, and if we just scroll through it, you can kind of look, you got your title column, your tags, your OCR text, your objects, your date uploaded, data analyzed. And we've got other unseen metadata that comes through for us. However, um, you see the thumbnail thing and you might think to yourself that that relates to your image column, but it actually doesn't. There's a lot of information here, but there is not, um, there is like a thumbnail of the item, but that didn't work for me either the first time I tried this. Um, you can access attachment URL. So if you, if you're doing, um, if you click new and you add attachments, you can do it that way. But we're trying to just, we're doing something to get the, the proper image. So um, what we can do, is so we can just delete this. The workaround is to do a um, SharePoint HTML call or HTTP call send an HTTP request to SharePoint. So it's kind of normal. We're going to um, use the same site address and we do want to do a get. We're not, we're not adding anything. We're just getting information back. So we're going to leave that as a get. And then <clears throat> for our URI, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the following. We're going to put in this URI. It's going to be underscore API slash web slash list slash get by title. And then there we need to put in the name of our list, which is photo album. And then we need to tell it which ID, which item we want. And we want the list item ID so we can use the dynamic content there. And that's going to get us a packet of information back, but we actually don't need the whole thing. So we can do a do a question mark and then um, select equals dollar sign image. Excuse me, that was, <laughs> was a goof. Um, dollar sign select equals image. And what you're selecting is the title of the column. All right, and then that will give us a packet of info back. Just go ahead and dump that in there and we will actually just kind of demo, demo this right now. So we're gonna save this. Okay, and now we're just gonna add, type in some nonsense and we're gonna click add an image and going to add these eggs. And um, down the road, we're gonna find that there is sort of a limit. There's a limit to the file size that you can upload to SharePoint. And I think that's 10 megabytes. And then later on, there's a limit when we send this off to the Azure service for photo for the vision computer vision analysis. And that is something like five megabytes. I wasn't able to find it written down anywhere, but trial and error led me to think that it's five megabytes. Okay, so we our HTTP request worked. We got this is what we got back right here, this image. Here's the body that we get back, image. So the image is really all we need. And image is underneath, what is it under? I don't know why it's called D. So what we can do now is we can just copy, we can copy this whole 
um, object, JSON object that we get back from the body of the HTTP request. And let's do, let's just do a parse. Parse JSON, generate from sample. We'll paste, paste that in there. All right, now we get all this. And here we can do um, one thing, if you notice, I'll just paste it again. The image, the image, um, it really should be an object. I mean, technically that's what it is. It's another, it's another JSON object, but it's, it's kind of formatted funny. It's, it comes through as a string, as you see right here, when, when we did, a when we generated our schema for our parse, it came through as a type of string. So we want to convert that back to an object. So over here, I'm just going to do JSON. And then I'm going to tell it to turn the image. And right here from the parse JSON, we'll go to image. There we go. Oh, you know what? I know why it came through looking funny here. Hold on. I skipped one part. So let's hit save. Let's go up here to HTTP. Okay, we've got an error. What's our error? Okay. Body. All right, so we forgot to put in a header. So we're going to accept application slash JSON semicolon. Then we're going to do OData equals no meta data. So that's why. That's why I had a little bit more going on in the body that came back than I thought there would be. So, um, I believe, I believe now that I've added this header in, I think the body that comes back is just going to look like this. It's just going to be it's just going to be that right there. So I'm gonna hit done. So it should be a little simpler now. Okay, we, we don't need that D part now. So let's um, just go to image. Here we go. Hit save. Let's rerun this real quick. Beautiful. Okay, so now we get back just that plain image object. And right here, when we convert it from a string back to an object, we've got a nice looking JSON object here with key value pairs. Um, the key stuff that we are looking at here are these two, the server URL, which we already really know that, but the server relative URL is a really important one because we see that we see where the file is located now. So it got uploaded to site assets, lists, and then the the GUID identifier for our list, and then the file name. So that's um, that's important right there. Now we'll move on to the next step. So for the next step, what we need to do is we need to find a way to access that file. And um, another problem. So problem A, problem one is you can't access the photo, the image column in a out of the box way. So that's the first major problem. Um, hopefully someday is fixed. The other problem is SharePoint's, uh, you know, SharePoint has some actions like to get the content of a file. So now that we know the URL of this file, you'd think, okay, we can just go get the content of that file, or you can go make a link to that file or something, but no, you can't do that either. Um, so that's problem two. However, the solution is you can copy that file. So we can use the URL to copy the file. And I won't get into why the other ones don't work. I actually don't really know 100% sure why you can't just grab the file content from that file using the URL. But I'll, all I know is I've tried it and it doesn't work. But the copy does work. So to do the copy, let's just first go ahead and make, let's make a place over here under documents. Let's make a folder to put our copied photos. 
So we're just going to call this photo temp. Or how about we call it temp photos. There it is. Okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to want to make a URL. Um, and first I'll kind of demonstrate what we want it to look like. So let's do copy, copy file, SharePoint. So current site address, still not there yet. So I'm going to copy that. Okay, and the file we want to copy. So let's just, first we can find it manually. So let's go here to manual. Um, what we do is we go to site assets. We go to lists. It's our only list. So we know it's the right one. And it's one of these files. Doesn't really matter which one. So that's what we need to get a URL looking like. So that's something to keep in mind. And let's just go ahead and compose. I'm just going to dump that right there kind of as a, a note. And um, our destination is going to be same site. And the destination folder is going to be that temp folder we just made. And that's going to be under shared documents, temp photos. And if another file is there, we're going to copy with a new name. Hit save. And now we're going to go back and take a peek at what we got the last time from right here. Basically, we're going to look at these, these two key values. Go back to edit. Okay, so this is, um, you know, this right here is what we got here. And now let's look, how, how would we go about making that, this type of URL from what we have here? Okay, so we got server URL. So actually, actually, we don't even need that because that's not in there. So forget that I mentioned that one. So we've got, so what we have here is the server relative URL. And it's basically the same thing as this, except it's a little got a little bit more information than we want. It's got sites, photo analysis, demo. Okay, so what we want to do is we actually just want to get rid. We want to get rid of that. And of course, there's a few different ways you could go about tackling this. Um, you can do it like a real simple way where you just look for and replace sites slash photo analysis demo. That would be one way to do it. Um, the problem there would be if you wanted to turn this into a template or share it with other sites, then you're going to have to edit that every time. So one thing you might want to do is think of a different way to do that that's kind of like programmatic or um, that would apply to all of them. So one way that I'm thinking that I might want to do that is what I might want to do so I might want to split this, split this string here by the forward slash and then kind of recombine. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit compose. And what I'm going to do I'm going to say expression is split and what we're going to split is we're going to split we should probably first name these so let's just name this image json so here we're going to split the image json by the forward slash
Okay. Now, when we do that, we just kind of look through here and see what we're going to get. Um, we're going to get basically probably a null on the first, and then the second's going to be sites, and then the third's going to be photo analysis demo. So we're going to get one, two, three that we don't want, and then the rest we do want. So what we can do then is we can say that we want to, we could, we could continue on with another compose to save um, actions. Let's do this. Let's say, let's say skip. We're going to skip the first three. So we skip the first three. Okay, now um, we want to join that together. So I'm going to say join. We're going to join it back into a string. And we're going to join it with the forward slash again. All right, so I mean, there's a high likelihood that I made a goof in there somewhere, but I'm actually feeling pretty confident. So we'll, we'll, um, Go ahead and plug this in here and see if uh, it'll work for us. Let's go ahead and rename it though to uh, compose file to copy URL. And right here, compose file to copy URL output. Hit save. Go back resubmit this and cross our fingers and see if this works. Okay, we made a goof. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know what I did. Okay, forgot to add in. Yeah, forgot to add in that we want to split um uh what was it called server url server relative url so we need to add that in here so back when the first step when i added in the the compose image json we needed to do a bracket and right there so that so that we're calling on that property of the object, which is a string. And then we can perform these operations on a string. Update. It's really messy when you try and update one of these. So what I like to do is copy the whole thing Hit update, check it out. If it works, good. If it doesn't, you can X and then just add it in again with your copy. But it looks like it worked this time. It worked, we copied our file over. So we can go over here to temp photos and There it is. Perfect. So I'll um just in case you're anyone's watching this and wants to is a little lost in what I did here, I'm gonna real quickly throw that on screen in another way. Okay, so here I'm in brackets, um, or you can use any any sort of coding thing. Um but I'm just going to do do do. Okay, so what you know what we did, we we pulled out first thing we did was we we referenced the string property server relative url and then we split that by the forward slash so it made it into an array with each component of the url that was delimited by the forward slash and then we kind of counted you know, we counted our items that would end up in that array. We knew the first item would be a null because it started with a forward slash, and then we wanted to skip the next two, so we come up with three. So at this 
part when we do the skip three we're just basically deleting the first three items out of the array and we're ending up with an array that's just um, the rest of them and not the first three and then we are joining that array back into a string and putting a forward slash as the separator or delimiter between the array items so that's the way we did this to where it'll work when we basically it'll work with, with whatever in the future any other site we want to add this to okay so now i can delete this i don't need that anymore and at this point what we're going to do is we're going to grab the content of that file we just made so we're going to say um, file content is what i'm going to search for get file content sharepoint and our site still hasn't come up so just copy it from before and our file identifier is going to be um, not item id i've made that mistake before we want to look for id the unique id of the file or folder so we grab that now we've got the file content so now we can do the fun stuff so for this next step let's go to vision computer vision api now the first time you set this up it's going to have you it's going to have you log in with your um with your key your credentials and stuff and i'll actually i'll actually demo how to do that um but let's just um if we look through here there's a lot of options now some of these a good number of these are actually included in the analyze image so some of them if you just want something specific and you don't want to mess with everything you get in analyze image you can just do one of the specific ones but I'm going to do analyze image. I'm going to do a parallel branch. And I'm also going to do, I'm going to do um, detect objects. Oh, here, I'm just going to hit that. Let's see. Detect objects. I'm also going to do OCR. OCR is optical character recognition for pulling text out of an image. And we can do that either to a JSON or to a text. I'm going to do OCR to text. Perfect. And I will now demonstrate how to do your sign in. I'm going to add a new connection. So this is what it looks like originally. And what you can do is you would open up in Azure your, your Cognitive Services app or service in Azure, and you'd get, the, you'd get your account key and the site URL. I'll show you what that looks like. OK, so here I am in Azure. Here's my Cognitive Services connection. Um, over here under Resource Management, you can click on Keys and Endpoint. And so you would just copy one of your keys and you'd paste that right here. And you also need a site URL and that's the endpoint. So you copy that and you paste that there and then you give you a connection name. You type something in here, you hit create and it makes it. Um, but I've already got connections. So I'll just leave it there. Uh, if you don't know how to set up Cognitive services in Azure, it's very simple. Um, and you can either look for someone else doing a video on it or one of my videos on it that I might do in the future, but you should be able to Google around and figure out how to do it. It's pretty simple. Uh, keep in mind, it does cost money to run this. You get, it's, um, it's depending on what you're doing and who you are, it might either be really cheap or really expensive. Um, it's basically, I think the pricing is around um, a thousand calls for a dollar. So you can, if you run this, if you run this thing like uh, a thousand times, or actually it'd be less than a thousand, you'd have these three here. So, <clears throat> you know, if I run this 333 times or something, um, it'll be a dollar.
but look into that. It's a little, it's a little more complicated than a thousand for a dollar, but that's basically what it is. Okay, so there's two ways to get the image to your your cognitive services API. You can give it a URL or content. Um, I've tried in the past getting like a SharePoint URL for sharing and sending it. That doesn't work um, because it's not really a link directly to the file. It's like a link to a SharePoint page that loads the file. So we want to do image content on all of these. And then for image content, it's real simple. We don't need to do any, we don't need to do any parsing or conversion. We just click image uh, file content from our get file content. Great. Um, so now we've got to, for some of these, we gotta we gotta finagle the data we get because it doesn't come out in like a friendly way to plug right back into SharePoint. So I'm going to go compose. I'm going to make a few of these actually. And I actually need some selects. There we go. So I'll show you why we're doing this. Okay. So let's go in here to compose and we can get an idea of what we get out of analyze image. So we get captions, caption text. So let's click that. All right, so now you see it does a it does it into a for each loop. So for each caption, we get text out of captions text. Uh, so what we can do here is we can just say captions. Let's And here we're going to turn this into the text mode. I'm going to go to expression. We're going to type in item. And then we're going to do whatever this is called right here, text. So basically we're just making an array out of, out of every text property. Because this is an array of objects. And so each object is going to have multiple properties, but we want to just make an array of one property. And that's what we're doing there. So now we can delete this. We can delete the. Oh no, we want to delete the for each. And now here, what we can do is we can say join We're gonna join the output from our select. And actually, I'm gonna rename this first. So I'm gonna rename it to um, select captions. And here I'm gonna say, join the output from my select captions. Mm. I don't know why I did that. I must have clicked something wrong. Join. select captions and we're joining it with, we're just gonna do a comma. You could do a pipe if you wanted to, but we're doing a comma. And we're gonna call this caption text. Down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select from, you know what, and I don't think I put a captions column in my SharePoint list, so we, we might want to do that before we're done here. Now I'm going to I'm going to go for tags. So I'm going to select from tags. And again, um, well, let's go down here and see what the name is that we're looking for. Tag name is what we want. We could have maybe selected tag names. I'm just going to do tag name here. So this does a for each uh, through our tags and the field, the property. If we just peek at it here, we see that the property is just name. So that's real simple. So here for select, we're going to rename this select tags. 
I'm going to go to our text view here. I'm going to do item name. All right, and here I'm going to rename this to compose tag names. And again, we're going to join the output from select tags with a comma. Delete this. Okay, we're going to kind of go over here and do the same thing over here. We're going to say select underneath detect objects. Selecting objects. And again, we're going to speak at what the name of the field is here. Object is what it's named. So that was good that we checked this out because over here, you know, we saw that we're looking for a name for the, the name is the key or the, you know, the field name, the property name for the value we want is called name here. And here it's called text and here it's called object. So we're gonna type in here item object. I'm going to call this select object. I'm going to X that out and we're going to select output. We're going to move it out of the for each. We're going to delete the for each. Goodbye. Rename this to, we actually need to do a join there. Um, compose objects. And this is going to actually be join. We lost it. Join. Select object with comma. There we go. All right. Now let's just save it real quick. We need to uh, we need to send this info to back to our list. But before we do that, I want to add a captions column. So I'm going to go over here. Captions. I think captions is blank a lot of times, but we'll find out. Okay. So now we're going to say a new step and our new step is going to be update item in SharePoint. And we still haven't gotten, we still haven't gotten our address in. So we're gonna go to custom value, drop that in, the list name, photo album. And our ID is going to be just gonna to go to the ID from the trigger now for the title, one thing I mentioned at the beginning was that we wanted to automate the title. So let's do compose title. Um, so let me go to, let's think about it. We want to do to an object and then the first couple tags. So the way to do the first couple tags would be, let's just work through this. I'm gonna say take, or actually, yeah, take, and I need to find my tags. And now we're looking for select tag 
I just had a brain fart earlier and didn't see it. There it is. Select tags. I'm going to take the first three. Okay, so now we got the first three, and now we're going to we're going to join those. And we're not going to do a comma this time. We're going to do a space. Actually, let's do a hyphen. Actually, let's do an underscore. <laughs> okay. And now I want to I'm going to concoct. I'm going to make that the second string. And the first string, I'm going to make the object. So compose objects. I'm actually going to make it instead of that, just in case I get something with a bunch of objects. Let's do first. So concoct. first object. So we're going to look for a select object right here. Select object. So the first of our select object array, we're going to take that and we're going to concoct it. Let's concoct it with an underscore and then comma our join tag names. First three think we need to put a parentheses at the end. Maybe we didn't. We we did. It just lied when it said it was not going to work. And I'm hoping this doesn't cause an error if there's ever less than three tags. We'll find out. Okay, so we got our title composed. So now for title, let's put that in. Compose title. Tags is going to be our composed tags. OCR text is real simple. We just grab the detected text output. Objects is going to be composed objects. Captions is going to be composed. We did compose captions, right? Compose caption text. There it is. All right, and this is going to be I'll just try, I'll just do UTC now. I'm actually not sure if that's gonna work. We'll find out. Okay, so. Resubmit. Unfortunately, the copy file takes like 12 to 15 seconds. Really slows it down. The rest of it is pretty lightning fast. So I guess our UTC now worked. Well, let's just hop over here. So look at this. Our name is now Egg Hay Outdoor Object Airy. Our tags are Hay Outdoor Object Airy Egg Pile Nest Bird Nest Dry. No text detected. Our object is an egg. Captions, a pile of hay. That actually might be good to put the caption in the title. That might be something to think about. And our data analyze came through. Good, good, good. So let's go ahead and try another one. Um, I'm going to do this screenshot I took earlier. Hit 
let's save. The screenshot was of the first time I built this flow. Screenshot abstract text is the title. I should probably put the date. I need to put the date in there somewhere. That's a good idea. Um, screenshot abstract text, parallel line, font, diagram, plot. Um, oh, and it did a... Let's open this up. So over here on our OCR, OCR text, it got like all kinds of text that was in that screenshot. The only thing it didn't seem to get, it didn't, it didn't seem to pick up my handwriting there. Graphical user captions, graphical user interface application. That's really good. That's really good. That's pretty amazing. So let's go over here. Um, I'm going to add in that. I'm going to add the date time to our file name. So for this, how we're going to do this, we're going to go over here to concat. We're going to do a comma to put another text string. And I'm going to put um, format, format date time. We're for formatting UTC now, comma. And our format is going to be, I'm going to do YYY for years, MM for months, day, day. And I'm going to just do dash hour hour minute minute second second now i'm copying it this time of course it didn't take it so i'm going to hit x i'm going to go to expression paste okay now we've got it there okay perfect so let's do let's play around with this a little bit more all right so i'm just going to mess with a few more of these I'm going to try let's add these chickens see what happens a few of these might be too big I tried to shrink them down just going to instead of doing them one at a time I'm just going to add a bunch of them um add the blonde chicken Let's do, I'm going to see what happens if I do this chicken shaking its head. Let's also add this egg carton. Let's also, this will be fun. See if it can um, read Latin. That one might be too big. I didn't check the file size. Do turntable. Do this page out of a book and now i'll just kind of check out what we got actually i'm going to do one more that book was probably too big i'm going to do okay so here for our chickens i got ground outdoor bird is that like the latin term for chicken what is this Galanasius. Okay, yeah. Interesting. Galanasius bird. Animal chicken standing black. <laughs> it's uh, like the word for the uh, pheasant, I think. Galliforms. Um, chicken, chicken. So that's funny. Under objects, it has chicken twice because it detected two chickens. So it, it's not like it, it gets them all, I guess. So it'll repeat. It'll repeat if there's multiples. Captions, a bird standing next to a body of water. I, That's not accurate. So it got, though the leaves are wet, and I guess it made, I guess it tricked it into thinking that's a body of water there. That's interesting. Um, the white chicken, ground, outdoor bird, rock, fall, leaf, autumn, wood, a bird sitting on a rock. <laughs> Close. 
there's it's gravel that's close um so here's our bird shaking its head let's see what we get chicken chicken a bird standing on a rock again bird ground outdoor gallinaceous i can't say that bird animal chicken rock standing feather Fazand, I don't, I can't say that. Peafowl, galliforms. Okay, so here we got our egg carton. Indoor text art. That's not right. So it did some OCR on that, huh? Okay, yeah, nutrition facts. Let's see how it did on the OCR. Not very good. Calories, almost 30 milligrams of something. Although I don't see that anywhere. It's probably there somewhere. Um, a stuffed animal is lying on the ground. Not right. So that one got really confused. Okay, so now let's look at our... This is our... Renaissance style painting of Moses and the Ten Commandments, and they're in Latin. Text, handwriting, person, book, human face, letter. So we did get some OCR. Doesn't look like it's the best, but it's all right. Over here we got record player, vinyl record, camera, electronics. So it's funny that the object and the caption didn't get anything, but we did get some tags that are good. Text, newspaper, screenshot, font. And it did OCR. And it's not actually a newspaper, it's an old it's an old dictionary, but it's pretty good. OCR is pretty good. Um, and our last one down here was this religious, medieval religious person, 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 person. It got four persons in there. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or seven, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got four of them. An old photo of a person. Drawing, sketch, painting, cartoon, human face, person, text, decorated. It's pretty good. And there you go. That's a demonstration of the things you can do with SharePoint, uh, Microsoft Power Automate, Flow, Azure Cognitive Services um, with computer vision on analyzing photographs. You can use these fundamentals to build a lot more sophisticated apps and procedures, of course. But this is a pretty cool way to get started with it. Thanks for watching.